Hello, my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet out once again on a walk in the New Forest. Today we're going to be doing a circular route around the villages of Hale and Wood Green in Hampshire which is in the northwest portion of the New Forest not that far from Fording Bridge. Along the way we'll be visiting the impressive Hale House, a lovely Georgian church, a village green and a rhododendron walk. So do join us. Logan, are you ready? Are you ready? He's ready. Let's go. Action. Well we're going to start our walk at the Hale Purlieu car park. A purlieu, by the way, is an area of land that, that was or has been disafforested uh, and is no longer subject to forest law. As I said in the introduction, we're right on the edge of the new forest. Indeed, over the centuries, this area has been in, out and in the new forest. It last came back inside the new forest boundary uh, in 1964. Now we're going to leave this rather pleasant woodland and heathland scene behind us and we're going to head into a very nice rhododendron walk. We've made our way away from the heathland and woodland area and we're now in rather a quaint little rhododendron walk. It's quite dark in here. Outside it's a quite a pleasant sunny autumnal day but in here under this canopy it's got its own microclimate quite cool and damp in fact if we have a look at this tree and this is typical of quite a few trees down this walk it's absolutely covered in moss and in fact if i touch it <laughs> it's almost like a as if it's covered in hair and uh I say it's absolutely thick with rhododendron in here which of course can be quite a, a thug once it becomes established it bec can become very invasive it looks as though someone's come down here and uh, cut quite a bit back to make it a little bit easier to walk which is well, I'm merrily making my way through this little bit of really damp forest and there's loads of fungi around. I'm no fungi expert but some little fellows over here that I thought I'd show you. How about that? I'm going to use my spotlight because it's so dark in here. So hopefully that'll come up. Looks like a little family outing doesn't it? Now I think those are sulphur tuft. They've got a yellowy brown tinge to them. And I know they do like tree stumps and they, they do grow in the autumn. But they are poisonous or should I say certainly it would make you very ill if you've had one. I think we ought to keep away from those Logan. Come on. Folks, we've made our way up to the Hale Village Green. It's called Hatchet Green, and it really is your quintessential village green. If I pan the camera around, there's the cricket pitch in the middle. A few cars to the right, there's the little village uh, primary school, which is a Victorian building. And just behind me, there's the little village hall. And then panning round, you have these lovely thatch cottages around the green. Look at that one over there, isn't it beautiful? And we have a sculptor in front of us. This is the uh, Millennium Sculptor. There we go. Sculptor was a chap called Paul Wilson. I don't wish to appear rude. But I'm not 100% sure what it's supposed to be. I know these days with modern sculptors they're designed to make you think, but hey ho. 
<laughs> but something alongside it now I do know what this is obviously an oak tree of some variety and in fact there's a little plaque what does that say oh we oak king's oak to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's accession to the throne put in 1992 I wonder why they didn't call it the Queen's Oak. Onwards and upwards. Wow. Isn't this pretty? With the hydrangeas outside. Lovely thatch cottage. This looks like it was the old post office by the looks of things. And the roses. Quite exquisite. In fact, that's a busy little road that goes through Hale, that's for sure. Another thatched cottage. And I love the way they paint them white as well, which brings out the, uh, the thatch. There you go, Black Rook Cottage. And then on the other side of the road, a little timber framed. Maple Cottage, 1896. Beautiful. Okay, well, looks like we're heading back into the <laughs> New Forest. Uh, we're going to follow, actually, the Avon Valley path for a little while. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But we're now heading towards Hale House and Hale Church which is about a mile from the centre of the village and there's a reason behind that and again I'll tell you about that when we get there. heading into Hale Park we're just walking down this wonderful lime tree avenue and as we were doing so I just spotted this terrific oak tree I'll just turn around and there she is now I believe that's the one that's 28 and a half foot in circumference uh, around the bottom but uh, I just wonder how old that chap is terrific isn't it so let me pan down and show you this avenue that we've been walking down and in the distance you can see Hale House and I'll tell you all about that when we get there. And this ladies and gentlemen is Hale House and quite a magnificent building it is too. I say the manor of Hale goes back to 1538 when it was bought by the Penruddock family and they held it for about two centuries before it was eventually sold to the well-known London architect Thomas Archer in 1715 and he basically demolished this Elizabethan manor and replaced it with a Georgian building as you can see now it's in a Palladian style and just look at those Corinthian columns. I believe he did a lot of his training in Rome, so I guess that's where he got the uh, <laughs> the idea from. But it's uh, it's not open to the the public. It's a private house. It is a listed building. I believe they do weddings here from time to time, though. But, uh, there's a little sign that says St Mary's Church which is where we're going to it's and here cool. is St Mary's Church in Hale tell you a little bit about it now back in 1130 there was an Augustine Priory that was founded in Bremer village not far away and that served the village of Hale for some time and in the 14th century the Priory built a thatched church here but uh, it was in 1631 that the famous 
architect Indigo Jones was commissioned by the uh, Penruddock family who, as I explained earlier, had owned uh, Hale Manor and they rebuilt the church in this classic style. But the church in its present form was created in 1717 when Thomas Archer, who had recently rebuilt the manor house, um, he effectively rebuilt the church in an almost Baroque style. And indeed, there's a, a memorial to him that he designed himself inside the church. It's just got the one bell, uh, quite an old one, 18th century. But uh, slightly unusual. Well, it seems we're passing by. Let's have a little look inside. That's if it's open, of course. It is. Right, after you. Wow. Well, it's a lot bigger inside than it looks from the outside. There's the font, obviously. And there's the uh, where the congregation will be. And then moving around the left hand side. And this, we've got the organ on the left, and ah, now this must be, yes, this is the memorial to um, Thomas Archer himself. Fair enough. Some lovely stained glass windows. There we go. Thought we'd have a little peep inside. We thought we'd have a look at the church from behind. And at the same time, just explain a little bit why Hale has changed over the years, because the church and Hale House are a good mile away from the centre of the village. Well, a few things affected Hale over the years. In 1358, the Black Death arrived. We're quite close to the River Avon here, and uh, the Black Death basically followed rivers primarily. And when that happened here, half the village died and the other half fled. Secondly, the River Avon itself, which was a quite a major uh, highway, it silted up and so a lot of the industry around here that was river based ceased and uh, people tended more to work in the forest, they moved away from the river. And then finally, um, when old Henry VIII came along with his dissolution of monasteries, that suppressed the Bremer Priory and so that had a big effect here. But. Uh, just looking at the church, you'll see some cracks in the roof there. It, it's built on a slope, which uh, isn't ideal, but it does look over a valley, although there are loads of trees in the way, uh, over the Charnford Valley, which um, way back in AD, 5, AD 519 uh, was the site of a re really big bloody battle where s some Saxons defeated a Britain army of 5,000 I think it was. But, uh, yeah, A sweet little church, slightly unusual. Anyway, we're going to now kick on and head towards the river. Well, part of our walk today follows the Avon Valley Path, which is a 34 mile long distance path established in 1992 that goes from Salisbury in the north down to Christchurch by the sea and effectively it follows the path of the River Avon itself. Speaking of which, it's just by me. <laughs> so let's have a look. So that's looking north, quite peaceful. And this is uh, obviously a huge water meadow and it does flood regularly. And then that's uh, looking south. Shame about the electricity pylons in the background, but that's uh, modern life for you. But very, very peaceful today. I say we're filming mid-September, and uh, still in the morning, sun's still quite low. But. Uh, 
a lovely, lovely serene setting. There are Folks, that's the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe and comment and do check out some of our previous videos. Hopefully you'll be able to join us on another video sometime in the future. I'm getting pelted by acorns under this tree at the moment. In the meantime, Logan and I are off to the horse and groom pub just down the road for some light refreshment. Thanks for watching and cheerio. Hey, we did it in one take that time. We're getting good. <laughs>